Hey guys, and welcome to my final lesson on character analysis. So today I'm going to walk you guys through my creative process for Romeo and Juliet and specifically a specific scene because you guys are going to be doing the same thing this coming week for your final project for theater production, okay? So uh, let's get started, all right? I'm gonna share with you guys my screen so that you can see my slideshow. Okay. All right. Given circumstances, Romeo and Juliet. So we started this last week, all right? So this will look somewhat familiar, but I'm gonna show you how I've added to it so that you can see the full creative process, okay? So in studying the play, Romeo and Juliet, I read the whole thing first off. Then I made my list of all of the scenes and all of the different scenery and all of the different settings in those scenes. And then I looked at the plot structure, okay? So in looking at the plot structure, I could see that there are some major turning points in the play, which I would be important for me to highlight in my set design. And it would also dictate which sets I spend more time on and which ones, you know, I might spend less time on or go for a more minimalist approach. So we already discussed that Romeo and Juliet is thought to be set sometime in the early Italian Renaissance, 13 to 1400s. And when I was looking at the play, I decided that the most important parts to emphasize in the whole play, the biggest turning points are the balcony scene and the fight scenes. So for this presentation, I'm going to focus on the balcony scene alone, okay? Because I wanna spend a lot of time in that scene. It's so iconic to Romeo and Juliet. It's the one that's quoted the most often and it's the one that sticks out in people's minds. So that's the one I'm gonna spend a lot of time on. Okay, and my, there we go. I love technology, I really don't. So in my last one, I started off with some inspirational photos, right, of the specific time period. So in Romeo and Juliet, uh, the Italian Renaissance, this would have been a Italian Renaissance house, okay? And then I mentioned I was inspired by the floors in this scene, the archways, all of the elaborate moldings. And this is Juliet's house, um, a museum that is actually in Italy that's dedicated to her and to Romeo and Juliet to the play. And I was also inspired by the ceiling work in here and the arches. So I mentioned all of this in my last video. But building on all of this inspiration, I also get to add in what inspires me right now. So right now, we're in the middle of the coronavirus, in case you haven't heard. And um, I've heard a lot of people refer to it as the upside down. Okay. So what has been inspiring me is Stranger Things and just that entire show and kind of the dark vibe of it, but it's also slightly retro-y and they just lean a lot into kind of the creepy aspects in their set design. And so I decided I kind of want to do that too with Romeo and Juliet. It can be such like a sweet, like super, super syrupy play and it's known for that. But what if we made it a little more spooky? What if we leaned into the tragic aspect and highlighted kind of how creepy things could be? It might make the comic moment stand out all the more. So I'm going with like a Stranger Things vibe, kind of thriller-ish to make it really suspenseful. Um, and I thought of the most creepy city in the United States, uh, New Orleans, okay? <laughs> it's also one of my favorites. So I looked online for photos that really inspired me and balconies and like houses that kind of looked creepy, 
that could serve as that inspiration for my final design. So that's one. That one looks very ghosty. That's another one. Of course, this is also creepy because of the filter that they've put in. But you can see in my inspiration photos, there's still those elements, those elaborate moldings that were in my initial photos of the Italian Renaissance. So I'm still keeping some of that. I'm not throwing it all behind, but I'm adding my own vibe into it. See, I still have arched windows. There's archways and columns here in this photo. And then tombs, the famous New Orleans tombs, because I'm already thinking, how could I connect this to the next most famous scene in the crypt? And that is my final inspiration. So this is the photo that I came across that I thought, you know, if I had to do this scene, I might try to do something very much like this. So I might make these arches rather than rectangular windows, but I'd keep the same sort of wrought iron balcony and do a similar moody lighting. And I even like that I have like a Juliet up there. I mean, I'm sure that that's not what she had in mind when she was up there, but. <laughs> and then I thought, costumes. What if in that famous scene, because what comes right before it is the party, the big famous party, where Mercutio is talking to Romeo and then they all go in and that's where Romeo first sees her, okay? What if in the middle of all of this party, if they're all filled with revelers that are wearing the creepiest costumes alive? And I'm warning you, like these costumes are really creepy. So if that's not your thing, just keep in mind, <laughs> this, is one, this is one idea. <laughs> so there's that guy. So this one, is a mask, obviously, a very elaborate mask. Remember, we studied masks. This is one of the reasons, because they can look fantastic. This guy, who's wearing a lot of makeup, <laughs> and her, she's got a headpiece and a gorgeous costume that gives the effect here. And this one, I really like. I was actually thinking Mercutio could wear something like this, so that could be cool. Okay. So those are my inspiration photos. So design comes from the given circumstances of the play. We've talked about this a lot, so, so much. So I know I need a balcony with different levels and I need to highlight the mood of the play, which the director who I'm also playing and who you will be playing for your presentation has decided will be spooky. It's gonna be a spooky vibe, okay? These are my given circumstances and it comes from your imagination. So spooky could mean a thriller vibe like Stranger Things, because that's what's inspiring me right now. So I'm gonna go for dark and moody colors. I'm thinking New Orleans. I'm, I'm thinking creepy and fantastical creatures on the revelers who are at the party. Things that would put my audience off balance and give a counterpoint to where people usually go with this play. So your assignment is to pick a specific scene from that big list that you should have made and create a profile of the given circumstances for that scene. So in that, in one of my earlier slides, I showed you guys, let's see, let's go all the way back. Okay, so here's my given circumstances that it's in the early Italian Renaissance, 13 to 1400s, and that the biggest turning points are the balcony scene and the fight scenes. So you'll need to show me those things that you can, that you can analyze the play, that you can highlight the most important scenes. And from those, you're going to choose one to do this assignment in. And then you're going to create an imagination profile. So that was the one where I talked to you guys about what was inspiring me right now. So you're going to create something like this and tell me what is inspiring you right now. What do you want to connect this play to? 
what pictures are, are getting you excited to produce something. And then you're going to show me at least four scenes for your, or four inspiration photos for your set. So I have one, two, three, four, five, because I'm an overachiever. And then you're gonna show me four scenes or four pictures, four inspirational photos for your costume and makeup design. So I have one, two, three, and four, okay? So that's, that's it. That is your final project for me for theater production. Um, I'm also going to leave this in Google Classroom, this entire slide presentation so that you guys can go back and you can even use it as a template for your, of your own if you would like. Um, so I miss you guys so much and I will see you in the Zoom. <laughs> And I'm going to stop this recording. Bye.